Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 290. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Today on the blogcast, I'm talking about the circus. Uh, I'm talking about an event that made me cry. I don't think it's going to make you cry. Uh, it might make me cry, but but we're going to get through it is all I'm saying. And the song at the end here was a real big old challenge, but I think it's going to be worth it. So stick around uh, for some circus talk and then some circus song. Okay, so uh, why don't I just go ahead and read it to you? It is called Waterworks at the Street Circus. When I walked up to check out the booths at Open Streets, that's the program that closes down slash opens up a couple of blocks to give the neighborhood some more public space, I wasn't prepared for a show. When I approached the second block, I saw a crowd and a truck. And then I saw some clowns getting the crowd fired up for their circus. Their performance style was so familiar, I almost just walked away. Feeling an habitual, I know what this is, I don't need to watch it. But then I found myself not walking away. And then I found myself not walking away for quite some time. And halfway through their opening sketch, I started weeping. And did not stop until I finally pulled myself away half an hour later. Was I watching and crying because the show was so moving, so good, so remarkable? I mean, the show was fine. It was perfect for the venue and earnest and sweet. I'm almost certain that the river falling out of my face had very little to do with the content of the piece. There is nothing particularly tear-jerking about a Chinese yo-yo or a tap-dancing ringmaster. It could be the audience. There was a big, joyful crowd of people, and the children did not hesitate when they were asked to repeat we want the circus. I for sure was moved by that. Maybe it was also just seeing an audience at all. I've only seen one other show since March of 2020, so I have not been in many crowds nor seen them. Maybe it's the novelty, the preciousness of a people gathering together to watch some show people on a truck bed. I kept trying to stop my tears because it became a little embarrassing. My handkerchief got soaked. A man came out of the crowd and looked right at my dripping wet face and smiled a little bit. He had a knowing look about him, like he knew what it was all about. Did he? Because I'm not sure I know what it was about. It wasn't the girls pretending to tap dance in their sneakers, though that had its charms. I did not notice anyone else crying their face off at the street circus, so this would seem to be a me thing. I have been cautious about going back to the theater, despite some really tempting offers for precisely this reason. I know that whatever I see in a theater again for the first time is going to be seen through the waterfall of my tears, and I'm being careful about what that show will be. I don't want to miss the show itself because of my response to the experience. The half an hour I spent at the street circus was about all I had the stamina for. The loud music was hard on my brain that was just emerging from a migraine, and I ran out of tissues after a while. I'm going to have to ease back into performances, it would seem. I think it's probably from love that I'm weeping. The thing is... I love performance and performers. I love audiences and shows. I am show people all the way through, and this pandemic has so thoroughly cut me off from that part of myself, I'm not sure there is anything for it but to cry. The marketing team can declare Broadway is back all at once, but as far as I can see, it's really out there, more or less, by itself, with a few well-funded buddies. Small companies, like the one I saw on the street in my neighborhood, are much fewer and far betweener. This particular one has been a part of the landscape of NYC performance as long as I've lived here. And it is a relief to me to see them out there still kicking and juggling. 
I may not recognize any of the people anymore, but I know their history. I was there for some of it. I don't really know how a small circus got themselves through this mess. I don't know how I got my theater company and myself through this mess. And I don't expect we're really through this mess so much as on a temporary reprieve. I'm sorry, I know there is not a country on this planet who has opened back up and not had to shut back down right quick like. Mostly, I guess, I try not to think about it. But sometimes the feelings about all that just make themselves known. The crying I was doing at the circus was very bizarre, and that I did not necessarily feel sad or happy or moved. I couldn't have told you what those feelings were. I felt disconnected from my own emotional world. It's like my tears were flowing without me. As an actor who can sometimes be called upon to cry, I cannot help but interrogate this new style of crying. It felt so involuntary. It was like when a strong wind blows in your face and makes your eyes water. I guess these are my new watching a performance tears. I don't have to work up any particular feelings, I guess. Just watch someone giving their all to an audience and the waterworks will flow. I want to go back inside and see shows again. I love the red curtain. I love the wooden O, the wooden arch, the wooden frame. I love a black box and a dance studio. I long to return to all of them. But I have yet to hear an epidemiologist recommend it. I feel like folks are doing shows indoors again, not because it's safe and we're ready, but because Broadway producers want to make some money. I don't blame them. There's no support for anything or anyone. To put folks back to work is the only way to put food back on a lot of people's tables. It may be safe-ish, since everyone's theoretically vaccinated and the audience is masked. It's not the least safe space to be, or at least it wasn't until Omicron kicked off. Now shows that just opened are closing again. There's something about the place that I love most in the world becoming so dangerous that it had to be closed everywhere. That makes me feel like I need it to be thoroughly safe now. Stumbling on a show two blocks from my apartment in the middle of the street is my dream of New York City come true. This is definitely what I hoped for when I moved here. And 20 years later, it happened. But only because we all had our little performers' hearts broken in a big way last year. Based on the major waterworks that kicked off at the neighborhood circus, mine is still in need of repair, I'd say. Okay, what's weird is I feel like there's absolutely nothing really going on, you know, because everything is still pretty much uh, flatlined. <laughs> but in fact, the, 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 the timeline of this blog post is really cracking me up because I wrote it before Omicron really kicked us in the face. And then I published it right around when Omicron was kicking us in the face. In fact, it was already on the decline, but we didn't know that really yet. Uh, and then now I'm reading it to you and it, it all feels like it's, you know, we're get, it's getting better, I guess, for us here in New York, but not elsewhere in the country, in the world. Anyway, it's just, if, uh, it's weird to have to be up to the minute with, um, it's not news, like it's, a, <laughs> I don't know, it's very, it's very confusing. Time is confusing in these times. That is what I will tell future generations if we survive, is that time was very weird in these times. So, um, the circus that I mentioned is the Bindlestiff Family Circus, uh, who I knew Many of their performers in the in, in my early days in New York, I used to be friends with a lot of circus folk, um, and I'm still friends with those circus folk. They just don't live here anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure there are still many lovely circus folk here in the city, uh, but this is a circus that I used to see a fair amount of because of, uh, of circus friends. 
Anyway, I'm really glad they're still kicking. It's corny as all hell, but I love them for it. Good job. Uh, yeah, so song. Um, I learned a, a story song, The Story by Jonathan Brooke. Um, it was not easy. Let me just say it, it took a long time. I had to learn a bunch of chords I did not know. And uh, it was worth it because it's exactly the right mood for this, I feel. And um, it's a song I've loved for many, many years. Uh, So it was cool to get inside it and try and understand how it's working and whatnot. Uh, I did learn something from just spending time with it, <laughs> which is, I don't know if you know this song yet. You will. You'll, you'll hear it shortly. But there's a line where um, she says, 17, the trapeze or my mother. And I always thought she was saying or, like over. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I have listened to uh, a lot of, you know, old folk songs And, you know, I I live in a Shakespeare world, so I hear or, and the rhythm of it is such that it just, it flows together. So I assumed the trapeze was or her mother, (laughs) over her mother. And the more I spend time with it, I realize it's actually a a, a conundrum. She's 17. She's trying to decide between the trapeze or her mother. Uh, and, And there, I did think about trying to like, you know, give a little breath between or my mother to uh, help with that. But it just, the way it's written, it just whoosh. So I did not. Maybe, maybe the next time. (laughs) If I, if I give this one another go at some point in my life, Uh, which would be fun. It's a, it's fun. So um, that's coming up here in just a moment. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you like the podcast, I'm delighted. And please tell someone about it. Share it with uh, whoever, your cat. uh, They probably won't register as a listen, actually. So tell a person, I think, is probably ideal. Um, And uh, social media is good. If you'd like to support it with your dollars, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's also Ko-fi and PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. And just a side announcement, um, I am now currently making season two of The Dragoning. I'm working on fundraising for that. So if you are interested in hearing a second season of The Dragoning, um, there's a link to that fundraiser in the show notes as well. And and you would help us get it made. So um, yeah, all of those links, again, in the show notes. Meanwhile... I give to you uh, Jonathan Brooks. The band is The Story. It was her band with Jennifer Kimball. Um, but uh, I'm, Jonathan Brooks wrote this song. Uh, I am doing it on ukulele, which is insane, um, but fun. <laughs> and I think that is all you need to know. Uh, So enjoy Damn Everything But the Circus. I was there in the rain when the tent went up. Seventeen, the trapeze or my mother. The ringmaster smiled and shook my hand. You will be mad. One way.
Buster wings from the funhouse door. Smell of the animals fills the floor. Next thing I know, I'm in South Carolina or Cleveland with the boy next door. Cause I was there.